Hi guys, welcome back to Hope's Instant Kitchen. Today we're going to make some lasagna soup in the Ninja Foodie. So your ingredients that you're going to need are some carrots. We're going to peel these and cut them up. An onion, you can use yellow or white. Some chopped up garlic, a little bit of olive oil. You're going to need either some chicken broth or some chicken base. You could use better than bouillon or you could use the powdered version here some no boil lasagna noodles some spaghetti sauce this is a 24 ounce jar of spaghetti sauce you can use any flavor that you like a can of diced tomatoes again use any flavor that you like for our seasoning we're going to need some salt pepper garlic powder onion powder italian seasoning and then i have here some fresh parsley and some fresh thai basil that i pulled from my arrow garden for meat, I'm going to use some mild Italian sausage. I'm just going to cut this into like pieces, maybe about like that big with kitchen scissors. And I'm also using some 80-20 ground beef because we like to have extra meat in our soups and spaghettis. So I'm going to use both of these. You can use one or the other or you can use both. It really just depends on you and your preference for how much meat you want in your lasagna soup. Also optional, you can add sliced mushrooms if you'd like. Alright, so in the bottom of my foodie I have put about two tablespoons of olive oil and I've also cut my Italian sausage up into little chunks. And to this I'm going to add my ground beef and we are going to get this thing plugged in and get it started. Alright, here I have my mushrooms which again are optional onion and carrots. The onion are optional as well, but I would definitely recommend adding the carrots because the carrots kind of balance out that acidity of the tomato sauce that's going to be in the soup. All right, so let's go over to our Ninja Foodie. All right, we're going to plug in our foodie here. I'm going to say foodie on the screen and we're going to hit the sear and saute button. The cool thing about the sear and saute mode on the foodie is that you can go from high to medium high, medium, low medium, or low. So that's pretty cool. We're going to go ahead and do ours on high and we're going to press start. As soon as this starts heating up, we will hear our meat start to sizzle and cook we want to go ahead and brown the meat all right guys so while we wait for the foodie to start heating up and sauteing our meat i'm going to go ahead and add my seasonings in so i'm adding in some black pepper here and just add as much as you like to taste i'm going to go in with my garlic powder i'm not going to add in my fresh herbs and i'm not going to add in the minced garlic just yet we want to wait until the meat is mostly cooked before we add in our minced garlic, I'm going to add some onion powder. We want to get the meat well seasoned so it'll have a good flavor. I'm adding in some Italian seasoning and I probably will add in more Italian seasoning after the meat has cooked before we pressure cook the soup. I'm going to add just a little bit of salt. I'm not going to add too much salt because we are adding in that chicken bouillon or chicken broth and that has some sodium in there as well. So you can hear the foodie is now heating up. And this is a non-stick pan, so nothing should stick to the bottom. But we just wanna go ahead and keep stirring this until it completely, or is almost completely browned. All right, so our meat is browning away over here. And at this point, what I'm going to do is go ahead, I'm going to add in my onions that I've chopped up. I'm not going to add in the carrots or mushrooms at this time. I'll wait till right before we pressure cook to add those in. And as you can see, the Italian sausage is releasing some of this grease, and that is going to add a lot of delicious flavor into our soup. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to add my onion, and I'm going to wait till this gets a little bit more done before I add in my minced garlic. So if you're going to add onion, you can go ahead and add them at this time. All right, so our onions have been added in. And as you can see, I left them kind of chunky. I mean, they are diced up, but um, 
I left them in kind of big pieces because we are going to pressure cook this. And I think I'm going to have to adjust my time a little bit because when I make this in my instant pot, I normally pressure cook for four minutes. But I'm not sure if I want to go for the same amount of time in the foodie because I've seen people do pasta in here for less time than the instant pot. I'm going to go ahead and try it at four minutes just because this is my first time making any type of pasta in the foodie or making the soup in the foodie. But normally if I'm making this in the instant pot, I pressure cook it for four minutes and then do a quick release. So we'll see how it goes. I'm going to continue to brown the rest of this up and then I'm going to add my garlic here in just a few minutes. About a teaspoon of minced garlic is about all we need because we did add some garlic powder in here. So we'll let this go for a couple more minutes and then I'm going to add in my garlic. Meat is mostly browned and at this time we're going to go ahead, we're going to add our garlic in, like I said, about a teaspoon or so. You can add as much or as little as you like, just some chopped garlic in there to give it some added flavor. And I'm going to give that a stir and we are still on saute on high, so I'm going to go ahead, get that mixed in. We do still have some pink in there, but that's okay. As you can see, the meat is mostly browned and the parts that are not fully cooked will continue to cook while this is pressurized. So it's no big deal if it's not 100% completely browned at this point. The first thing that I'm going to do is add my pasta sauce. And like I said, you can use whatever flavor or brand of pasta sauce you want. We're going to just dump that in. But don't get rid of the jar or the can that you use because we are going to add we are going to add some water into this jar to help to get the rest of this out and to help make our broth because we are going to add that bouillon flavor in there. Next, we're going to add in our can of tomatoes. Again, you can use any flavor, any kind you like. I did not drain those. I'm just adding all the juice and everything in there. And I am actually going to come down I'm going to come down to my control panel here and I'm going to hit stop. And you can see it's flashing where it says high, so it has stopped. Okay. And this is nice and bubbly over here. And this is the six and a half quart Ninja Foodie. It's not the big daddy eight quart, but it'll work just fine. Now I'm going to add in some of my chicken bouillon flavor. I'm going to add about maybe, let's see, I'm going to add about two teaspoons of the bouillon, chicken flavor bouillon powder here, and then we're going to add in some water. Get that added in. Next, we're going to add some water. So I'm taking my jar that I used for my pasta sauce. And I'm gonna go ahead and maybe fill it. I'll fill it all the way up, because this is a soup. So filling this up, that is another 24 ounces that we're adding in here, because this is a 24 ounce jar. So I'm just swishing this around to help loosen up any sauce that's left in the jar. And go ahead and add that in. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see it back here, but this is the pressure, the max line for the pressure cooking. So we don't want to pass that line. It says max up here, but that's the pressure max. So we don't want to pass that. So we're going to be just fine here. The next thing that we're going to do, I'm going to give this a little stir to kind of stir that bouillon powder around. Now it's time to add our no-boil lasagna noodles. So I'm going to take these noodles and I'm going to break them up. And you might hear my dog snoring in the background. He must be dreaming. But we're just going to tear these noodles up just like so. And you can use, you don't want to use too many noodles because this is a soup. 
So we don't want to make it like a lazy lasagna. If you add too many noodles, it'll come out more like a lazy lasagna type meal than a soup. So you want to get enough noodles in there, but you don't want to add too, too many. And you can break them up just any kind of way. So I'm going to get these broken up. I'm going to add about four or five noodles. Just breaking them into pieces, adding them in. They can be all different shapes and sizes. Just throw them in here and then I'll see you back in a minute. I only used four noodles here and we're not going to stir them in. We're just going to kind of take our spoon and just kind of make sure that they get under the liquid. I didn't want to use too many noodles just because, like I said, it would turn out like a lazy day lasagna instead of a soup like we want. So to the top of this, I'm going to add in my mushrooms, which are optional, and I'm going to add my carrots right on top. Again, not stirring or mixing anything together. All right, so now I'm just adding in my carrots right on top of everything. Just spread them around. And I'm also going to do the same with my mushrooms here. And we're almost ready to pressure cook, guys. Just put these right on top. And I did use an entire small package of mushrooms and I used four large carrots. Peeled them and cut them up. So you can chop these as thick or thin as you like. But I just cut them into pieces about that thick. Alright, now we are moving on to our... Moving on to our final steps here, I'm going to add a little bit of Italian seasoning on the top. Just sprinkle that in as much or as little as you want. And I'm going to add my fresh herbs for my arrow garden. So I'm just going to tear up some parsley and drop it in. Again, this is all optional. Or if you have dried parsley and you want to use it, you can add it. I have my just kind of ripped up parsley and basil pieces in there. Now what we're going to do is add our pressure cook lid. So don't close the air fryer lid. You have to put the pressure cook lid on. Make sure that your ring is in there properly all the way around. We're going to line the little locks up here. Twist it to secure it. Make sure that your pressure valve is on seal and not vent. Very important or it will not come to pressure. We're going to come down here to our control panel. We're going to hit pressure. It's automatically on high, which is what I want. And my time, the time always starts at 10 minutes. We're going to go down to four minutes and we're going to hit start. And as you can see right here, it shows that it is pressure cooking and this is going to spin around until it's reached pressure. Then the time will start counting down from four to zero. Also, you'll see the red button back here pop up when we've reached pressure. So I'll see you back here after our four minutes of cook time has passed. All right, so the four minutes has passed, and as you can see, it's now on keep warm, and it's counting up. I'm going to go ahead and hit the start-stop button. We're going to do a quick release and let out all of the pressure. So go ahead and carefully flip your lever from sealing to venting. You want to be really careful because this pressure is going to shoot up and it is hot. All right, so now that the pin has dropped and the pressure is released, we're going to go ahead and remove our lid here. Be careful to lift it away from you because the steam is going to be hot and there's going to be some water dripping there. All right, we're going to set this to the side. Now we're going to give this a stir and it looks just the same as it does when I cook it in the instant pot. So the way that I serve this is I just scoop it into a bowl and I top it with some mozzarella cheese, which again is optional. You could eat this just as is, but it is so delicious. All right, guys, if you want to kind of thicken it up, you could, you could have added more noodles. I only did four noodles, so you could have added more, um, but I find that when I add a whole bunch of noodles in there, it makes it more into a lazy day lasagna. So if you want to make like a lazy day lasagna, follow this exact recipe, except add more noodles in there. All right, so that is it, guys. 
Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not already, and click the notification bell for more videos about the Instant Pot and the Ninja Foodie. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.